Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. That's what I love about Surgeonsville, that hearty good morning. Most of you know me, but for those who don't, my name is DJ Wright. Again, on behalf of my family and our care team, our thoughts and prayers are certainly with all of you who, like us, love Judy. A couple of things today. Obviously, we are not inside church, but knowing Judy, this would be her next, next best thing. So... Uh, I certainly can speak for her and, and thank you all for coming. If you have a cell phone or pager, please just make sure that's in the silent or vibrate mode, if you will. You can all hear us back there? Well, most of you know I have a big mouth and don't need this anyway, but we figured, Eric, come on, be nice. I'll tell your dad on you. Um, but again, it is a good morning, and you know uh, most of you have been with me on fortunately or unfortunately, many times over the years. And I always begin our life celebrations with that good morning, good afternoon, good whatever, because if we don't stop and realize that it's good and great to gather together as God's children to celebrate the wonderful life uh, that he gave through Judy, and she so much appreciated. And all the preparations for today really are just a lot of pomp and circumstance and don't really mean much. So for Judy, because in speaking with her about this day, I know she wanted it to be very faith-based, but she wanted everybody that no matter what your spiritual theories were, that you leave here with hope, that you leave here stronger when you came in, and that for Judy, you do not shed a tear. Because she told me, if anybody cries, I have to tell them to stop. I said, Judy, I can't do that. And she goes, <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it as well as she. But that's because she wanted people to know that she knew where she was going. She wasn't afraid. Don't mean we can't be sad, I said to her. But she said, all right, I'll give you that. So I would ask you as we're going to be beginning in a moment, just to close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Appreciate the beauty of nature. as I invite Pastor Kim to come forward for our beginning. Let us pray for Judy and for this memory of our service for him. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He reads me in right path for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I feel no evil, for you are with me. Your role and your step, they comfort me. Life-giving God, we come today to honor our loved one, Judy Ralph, we are gathered here today, not only to grieve the loss of her, but to also give thanks to you for her life among us. We are gathered here today, not only to mourn over how different our lives will be without her, but to give thanks to you for how full life was when she was with us. Lord, we ask that you comfort us this day as we come together to share love and sweet memories with one another. We believe that Judy lie down in green pastures with you and many other beloved believers. My Lord, you led her to the pasture and beside the still waters. We hope, we believe, someday you will lead us to the pasture and beside the still water as well. 
and we will finally meet Judy and we'll catch up on what we have been doing by having a picnic at the pasture. <laughs> we are living in this world with the hope for a kingdom of heaven. But after Judy left, for her family members, her friends, and all church members, there was a gaping hole in their lives. Good and gracious God, please be with them and comfort them with your world and stead. Please give them peace and prudence to live with the hope for the heaven. Please give us power and strength to truly believe and attain to the resurrection. We love you, God, our Lord, Jesus, our Savior, and the Holy Spirit, our Helper, who you have loved. In Jesus' name we pray. Now let us sing Amazing Grace, you and him now, 378. Actually, just Kristen's going to be singing for us today. Take it away, Kristen. <laughs> Morning first scriptural reading is from Psalm chapter 23. Listen to the word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in white path for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley, of the shadow of death, I feel no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you. Now I sing, it is well with my soul. As Pastor Sarah mentioned, a Christian is the only person who can sing in this place, yeah, but uh, you can hum along with her. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your cooperation and consideration.
was a woman of many talents, many abilities. She was a compassionate caregiver and advocate. She was a trainer of our therapy dog, Zoe. She was a lay speaker here, which meant that she often gave sermons when the pastors were away. But she was also a talented, uh, creative writer. I'd like to invite Loretta forward to share something that Judy's written uh, entitled Letter to God. Dear God, please forgive me for not thanking you for all the gifts you've given me. I don't say it often enough. I look back at the days, weeks, months, and years and think I have been a terrible child of yours. I haven't properly thanked you for the gift of life and all that goes with it. The music which always brought me joy, the colors of the flowers, the leaves, the birds, etc. The ability to love and be loved. That was probably the greatest gift of all. Down through the years, you have given me the opportunity to work with some of the most remarkable individuals. Some have been clients and others have been fellow staff. Each has allowed me to give and receive love. No expectations or demands were ever put on anyone. Love just was. You drew me into the church by a path. She was and still is a wonderful mentor. I know you put her in my life to touch me so many things. She taught me about faith and all that it belongs. Not only the belief, but the love that always goes along with it. It is summed up in my favorite Bible verse, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I have been remiss in my praise and gratitude, dear God, but I often think of John 3.16. It seems to sum up my beliefs and feelings, but you know it all, that you know it is in my heart. Thank you, Loretta. I am Sarah, I'm one of the pastors here, and I feel so honored and so privileged to be here with you today. I met Judy a number of years ago. I was just starting out as a pastor at Centenary in Lambertville, and week after week I would see Judy and often Jude and sometimes some other residents as well. And I was so glad to hear of Judy's passing. I was really looking forward to seeing her again when I knew I was coming here. Judy's favorite scripture was John 3.16. And as I was getting ready for her service, I thought that this passage would also be appropriate, and I hope that you'll understand why. Our gospel reading today comes from John, and it's a moment when Jesus speaks words to his disciples right before he died. He wanted to reassure them that even though they parted, the separation wouldn't be permanent. Jesus would return, and he would one day bring them to his father's house also. Let's listen to God's word for us today. Jesus said, Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself, so that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. I will not leave you orphaned, I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. And because I live, you also will live. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and will remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace, I leave with you. My peace, I give to you. 
I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. It's the word of God for all people. Thanks be to God. Amen. So I mentioned I met Judy a number of years ago as a little baby pastor, <laughs> and I would talk to her almost every week about something or nothing. She told me that she was a lay servant. She would tell me about the sermons that she would be preaching. She told me about her fascination with the 1955 flood of the Delaware. Everything I know about that, I learned from Judy. And when I left uh, Lambertville to go up to Lebanon, she told me the nefarious history of Round Valley Reservoir and all that went into creating that. Uh, Judy loved uh, bodies of water. Now, my impression of Judy, Judy was a private person, but she knew how to make someone feel welcome. And I learned as I was getting ready for this service, this is a skill that she honed over time. Judy wrote a sermon once about how she loved to sit on porches as a child. She would sit on the porch in the evening and friends and neighbors would stop by. They would tell stories and tell jokes. She loved porches. She created, I don't think she had a porch here, but she created a sort of porch for herself. She thought that the art of porch sitting was a lost art. She understood the practice to be a, a, a sign of love, creating space for someone to enter in and share life with you. She believed as part of caring for the body, offering lemonade or iced tea, and that by listening to someone's story, you were also caring for their soul. All this for Judy was a way of putting love into action. She wrote, it wasn't the porch that was important. It was the coming together of family, friends, and acquaintances that was significant. It was an opportunity to get to know one another. One could share life stories, joys, concerns, heartache, laughter, tears, and love. It always came back to love. When we get together and share of ourselves, we are loving one another. That's what Judy believed. I believe that Judy practiced porch sitting wherever she went. She didn't need a physical space. She made me, a young fledgling pastor, feel comfortable in my role. I myself enjoy porch sitting, but I am rather shy and I'm not so good at the mingling. And so when I was just starting out and the expectation was I would visit all the tables I knew that with Judy, there was a comfortable place where I could sit for a while and have a good chat. She helped me to practice the art of mingling by being gracious with me and generous with her time and porch sitting with me, even in the midst of Lambertville's fellowship hall. I'm so sad that she isn't with us anymore. She was a remarkable lady. But the good news is that I'll see her again. And so will you. Because the love that Judy showed in her porch sitting didn't just come from Judy. It came from someone who lived and died so that Judy could have life and you could have life and I could have life. And that person was Jesus. In our lesson today, we read Jesus giving a promise to his disciples. He didn't, they don't have to be afraid. He was coming back for them. He was leaving them just for a little while to prepare a place for them. That promise that Jesus gives to the disciples, it echoes down the centuries to Judy and to us. Don't be afraid, for there is a place prepared for us. We sometimes say that in our Father's house there are many mansions. Sometimes we say in the Father's house there are many dwelling places. But for Judy, I don't think it much matters whether it was a mansion or a dwelling. I actually don't think she quite like a mansion, to be honest. 
but I think that it would be important that it had a porch, or at least an area that functioned like a porch. A place where acquaintances could gather and become friends. A place where stories could be shared and love could grow. I know for certain that the Lord has prepared a place for Judy, and Judy is going to have a porch. And on that porch, I am certain that Jude will be there, that Zoe will be there, that Pat will be there, and that all of us, each and every one, will always find welcome. Today we honor the life of a woman we knew who loved us and who we loved back. Today we bid farewell, but it's not a permanent goodbye. Today we honor a woman's life and we say, see you later. For Judy and you and I are all held in an unfailing love, the kind of love that can defeat death. And so we have hope that we will see Judy again. One day we will all gather on a great big porch. We'll see one another face to face and we'll tell stories like we never have before. Thanks be to God for this incredible gift, for the hope we have that all of those we love, Judy and Jude, our family, our friends, we'll all see them again one day. I've shared just a smidgen of what I knew about Judy. There is so much more that could be said. In a little bit, we're going to have a time of sharing, but I'd first like to invite Pastor Jessica, who was so important to Judy, to come up and share a little bit about her. So thank you, Pastor Sarah and Pastor Han, for inviting me to be present this morning and to share just a few words with you. I was blessed to be Ju Miss Judy by the post office's pastor for four years. For those of you who are confused as important as I was to Miss Judy, I think a lot of that was my son who came in tow with me. And having two Miss Judys, we had a Miss Judy by the post office and Miss Judy up the hill. And that's how we knew where we were headed on our walk that day. Before I came to Surgeonsville, as also a baby pastor, not as young as Pastor Sarah, but young in my experience with a child in tow, someone had warned me to be careful about going to a small town. Had said, you know, those small towns, everybody knows everybody, and everybody knows everybody's business. So I thought, okay, I'll never forget the first time I met Miss Judy. It was a hot June day, and I hadn't moved into the parsonage yet. We were in between appointments, but Pastor Lynn was off on vacation, and I was called in by DJ to do a funeral, not knowing anybody besides a few key leaders that I had met. I parked in the lot just down there, and I hauled the stroller out of my trunk and plopped Micah in and strapped him and started to walk towards the farmer's market where I think Linda and Dave and Mia were. I had just gotten through the red blinking light and was making my way to the open green space when I heard, hey you, are you the new pastor? And I thought, oh man, they were right. <laughs> I stopped and looked, and of course, Miss Judy on the porch of, I forget the name of the luncheonette, but I know it was Viz, right? Where Miss Judy used to love to go for lunch, where she would get her sandwich, her egg salad sandwich, and sit outside on the porch and wave to people as they went by. In that moment, two things happened. My nerves started to melt, and I thought, wow, they were right about small towns. I have one reading that I would like to share with you this morning, and it doesn't come from the Bible, as important as that book is, but comes from a book that I preached on when I was here at Surgeonsville, a sermon on the Velveteen Rabbit. In the book, there is this conversation between the rabbit 
and the horse. What is real? asked the rabbit one day when they were lying side by side near the nursery fender before Nana came to tidy the room. Does it mean having things that buzz inside of you and a stick out handle? Real isn't how you are made, said the skin horse. It's a thing that happens to you when a child loves you for a long, long time, not just to play with you, but really loves you. Then you become real. Does it hurt? Asked the rabbit. Sometimes, said the skin horse, for he was always truthful. When you are real though, you don't mind being hurt. Does it happen all at once like being wound up, he asked, or bit by bit? It doesn't happen all at once, said the skin horse. You become, it takes a long time. That's why it doesn't happen often to people who break easily or have sharp edges. Generally, by the time you are real, most of your hair has been loved off and your eyes drop out and you get loose in your joints and very shabby. But these things don't matter at all because once you are real, you can't be ugly except to people who don't understand. Judy was someone who made God's love real. For me as a young pastor, but also for all of those God brought in her path. While she could be and often was stubborn as all heck, we had DJs uh, trying to display that stubbornness and I'm not even gonna attempt to hit. Her heart was always in the right place. Her intentions behind that stubbornness were always good. She loved animals, especially that sweet dog Zoe that I heard stories and stories about. She loved her job. I call it a job, but I also call it a calling, a ministry. The people at the Ark were more like family to her, whether it was client or employee. I think it's why she pushed to keep working as long as she did. She loved her friends. She loved her church. I think she'd be okay with me saying she loved her food too, <laughs> especially a slice of pizza from Maria Rose's or even a whole pie so there'd be some leftovers and her iced coffee. And of course, she loved God. I didn't know much about Judy's story prior to her coming here at Surgeonsville, but she told me again and again how she felt God had brought her here from the first time she brought somebody from the group home to worship to all of the times that followed over the years. While in the end she was estranged from her biological family and didn't talk much about that story, Surgeonsville, the Ark, and the St. Baldrick's community became her chosen family. And what a privilege and honor that was to be part of the chosen family. Speaking of St. Baldrick, Pastor Sarah and Pastor Han, have they told you that pastors here shave their head? I knew it. <laughs> just, just making sure. I'm easing into that. <laughs> All jokes aside, my fondest memories of our St. Baldrick and just seeing how alive Judy became. It was a cause that she was passionate about. She found after shaving her hair that it was more manageable, buzzed down short. But whenever we got close to shave day, she would let it grow in enough that there would be a small pile of hair on the ground. I also remember her bidding on more items than she had room to store and then giving them away. Perhaps the favorite item being the year of desserts, which became part of our coffee hour offering the year she won that. Many people have trouble sharing their faith journey. Judy did not. As a certified lay speaker, she was willing to prepare a homily and deliver it in church from her post outside her door at home or even at a care facility. One of the talks that I believe was her, one of her favorites, because she told me about it often, was a response to a question I posed. And I don't remember why I had asked this question and if several had responded to it, but the question was, why do you believe? Why do you have faith? And in her response, she talks about Rayana. 
and how after Rihanna died, way too young, how her mom and grandparents and adopted aunts and uncles and community rallied around to create the St. Baldrick fundraiser that she was so passionate about. And while I don't remember all of the details of that porch talk, I do remember the ending. How could I not have faith? This is the legacy Judy leaves us. So I ask the same question. How can I not have faith? How can we not have faith? No matter how difficult things became and the, the later years of her life were challenging, from the loss of her beloved Zoe to the death of her best friend and mentor, Pat, also known as Granky, to the death of Jude. But she still would tell me no matter what was going on, Jesus loves me, this I know. And she claimed and hung on to that promise. May we find comfort and peace knowing that Judy is resurrected, that her body is healed, that she is reunited with all of the beloveds that went before her. May we find hope knowing that she has left a handprint on our hearts and that a piece of her continues to live and grow in each of us. I'd like to close by sharing a poem that reminds us that our end is not truly the end because of the legacy that lives on with each of us. It was written by two rabbis and is called We Remember Them. And it was originally written as a call and response, but I'm going to eliminate the repetitive responses and just share it in a beautiful poetic form. In the rising of the sun and it's going down, in the blowing of the wind and the chill of winter, there's the blowing of the wind. In the opening of the buds and in the rebirth of spring, in the blueness of skies and in the warmth of summer and the rustling of the leaves and in the beauty of autumn and the beginning of the year and when it ends when we are weary and in need of strength when we are lost and sick of heart when we have joys and special celebrations we yearn to share so long as we live they too shall live for they are part of us we remember them Thank you, Jessica, for painting us such a beautiful picture of who Judy was and the love that she shared uh, so selflessly with all of us. There is no pressure, but I know that there is so much more that we could say about this amazing, uh, stubborn woman and the impact she left on our lives. But anyone else have to share a story this morning? DJ. Thank you, Pastors, for your beautiful words. And if Judy knocked this over on you, Jess, I think the lightning was for me. <laughs> so some of you may be surprised at this, but I met Judy at a funeral. I know, shocking, right? I've been honored to care for many of the art clients over the years. And if you're a dog person, as most of you know, Judy certainly is. I know, darling, I'm going as quick as I can. Um, you'll know that we, we spot each other pretty quick. And um, Judy told me about how much Zoe and all of her other animals meant to her and how much she loved to bring them to the art clients. And then it turned very quickly to how the ark was her family. And the name's been mentioned several times, but it's important that we stop and remember Jude today. And we're going to come back to the reason why in a moment. So I would see Judy over the years, and she always gave me smiles. She was always wanting to help others. That was 
she felt most comfortable when she was doing something for another person hadn't seen Judy in a while and as we all know the good Lord brings us back into people's lives for certain reasons that we're not meant to understand at the moment and about a month before Judy died I was brought back into her life originally yes as the undertaker as she needed to prepare certain things but it became so much more than that as I went for my coffee talk my porch conversation Judy couldn't get out of her chair at that point but as soon as I sat down she pointed right in front of her to make sure that I saw how big Micah had gotten and I know because I see him on Facebook all the time but she made sure that that was the case and then she pointed at Zoe's big portrait which was on the opposite wall and I said I remember Zoe very well and she said I miss him and then there was Jude's picture and she kept right there as well she said I miss him too and then she pointed across the wall to John 316 a very most of you who've been to her house know that big portrait as you go to the kitchen she said, but it's okay, because I'm going to see him again. And I said, okay. Are you ready? Like, do you really want to go so soon? Because we kind of want to keep you around. She said, well, when God wants me, he'll take me. And then some time had passed, and some other people had become and, and everybody was looking out for Judy's best interest and in her strong willed, I wouldn't call it stubborn, I call it strong willed. That keeps the light in the way, Jess. <laughs> that she just didn't want to be a bother to people. And during one of our conversations I said, Judy, don't you realize all your life you've put out the gifts that God gave you without ever wanting anything in return. And now they're coming back tenfold because everybody wants to help and be there for you so it's not that people want to be your caregivers because Judy did not want to be um, given care I said it's people who love you that just want to be there and she looked at me with a little like head tilt and she laughed because I said is that what Zoe used to do when you and got enlightened <laughs> and she goes you little snot um, and that was that day. And then, of course, on my way home, I ran over to Marinelli's and brought her a full pizza back. She was very happy after that. It was not soon after that Judy could not stay in her home. And several of you here, just without any hesitation, jumped up. And I'm not going to name you individually because that's not what you would want and that's not what Judy would want. But know in your hearts that you made a difference in her level of comfort. She was brought to Independence Manor where she had her three room suite that she was very proud of. And you know the only things that she wanted? A picture of Zoe, a picture of Micah, a picture of Jude, and the John 316. Out of her very densely packed house, you can laugh, she would appreciate it. That's all she wanted. And I sat back and I thought to myself, wow, what a testament to her faith that out of everything, and the Velveteen Rabbit just was perfect because she realized that it had nothing to do with stuff. It was the people, God's works through Zoe, and the words that made everything so important. Her friends, many of you who are here, got her to Independence Matter. She was doing better. We were actually, most of you know, at our funeral home, we have uh, two therapy dogs, a 16-year-old chocolate lab. Ooh, Judy always reminded me that the white labs were better. <laughs> it was a bone of contention, but I still loved her. And then a Portuguese water dog, three years old, and I was on my way to Indiana to go get our new Australian Labrador puppy fully trained as a therapy dog and Judy was so excited because I promised that I would bring her 
right to Independence Manor as soon as we rolled back into town to see Miss Judy and get some puppy love. That was on a Saturday. Just a day later, I got a phone call and, and so did Pastor Jess because Judy put our names down and didn't tell us. You know, what she did, that's okay. We still love her. As kind of her medical legal powers of attorney, of which it's illegal and unethical for the undertaker to be that, of course. Or the former pastor. Or the former pastor. But Judy didn't care because, as she said, she felt that Jess and I would follow her wishes and, and do what needed to be done. Although she didn't tell us that at the time. So Jess and I pretty much arrived at the same time. We gowned up in the days of Corona in that facility. We were 18 gloves, masks, everything. I told Jess, are we going to space or what? I said, this heaven, I thought it was a little closer. She said, there's no map. So we got to Judy's room, and Judy had had a stroke. She was sleeping comfortably. It didn't seem she was in pain. We both went on either side of the bed and, and said various things with just some moaning, little little affect at all. Until I whispered into her ear, Are you ready to see Zoe and Judy? She smiled. Her lips that had been kind of downward by gravity, she forced them to come up. Here, I thought she was unconscious. She smiled. I said, Jude, we love you. And if you need to go, we won't stop you. You need to do you now. You've done for so many, for so long. You need to do you. She kind of tried to turn her head. And then Jess had her other hand and said something to the effect of, you know where you're going. And she grabbed and squeezed Jess's hand. And that was it. She lived overnight. She was not conscious again. And in that moment, as someone who sees death daily, for those who it's very much expected and those who it's very much unexpected, Judy was once again the teacher and the caregiver for myself and I think Jess as well. She taught me again, it doesn't matter about stuff. This is what matters. And as much as she didn't want a big gathering because she didn't want a bus made over her, the faces that are here are the threads her quilt of life. The Ark family, you are her family. That is very much true. She spoke about you all, all the time. And she missed you. She just didn't want to be a burden, even though we all know she wouldn't have been. The church family, she lived for seeing you and getting your opinions on what that book said. You all know that book. She loved to have different perspectives on it. We will miss Judy. We'll miss her genuine love and affection, but I firmly feel that she lives on in all of us. And every step we take, we carry her through. She would not want us to be sad. So I'm trying my best to not be. I don't know if I can carry her spunk. I'll try. I think faith is something that we constantly work on and that's something she taught me as well. But my prayer for all of us, as it was Judy's wish, as I said when we began, is to leave here with hope. Hope in each other. A bit about the heaviness that was in society right now. She said, Deej, we just got to keep trying. And through all her pain, she said that. And I couldn't believe she said that because, you know, she was having some struggles of her own. But she said, we got to keep trying. 
Always the teacher. Always the caregiver. If someone could stand when it's my turn to be up here and they could say that that person loved genuinely and cared for anyone who came into her path, human, animal, or otherwise, I would pretty much consider my life a success. So if that's the measure, Jude, quite a success. Thank you for being our guardian angel and keep on looking down. Thank you. Thank you, DJ. When we first spoke about Judy, you told me she really didn't want to fuss. And I wonder if this kind of counted for her as a Oh, 100%. Fuss. And she's getting, the, she's getting the last word, which is not fit down. Yep. Would anyone like to share a story or remembrance of Judy? No. We can bring the mic to you as well. We can, and we will. It's so hard, it's so hard to sum up such a wonderful lady in just a small story. A memory of, of, of Judy, you know, the blessings of the past, and when, you know, and, and her being there with I guess Zoe, and uh, and her bringing her her uh, Jude and, and her care, the people that she cares for, her to service and and just uh, you know her. And those are early memories I have of Judy, but her just contentment, you know, her just kind of just being there. And, and there was a certain, I think, naivety about her, a certain um, just very basic way of looking at life. Thank you. Thank you so much. Another one of Judy's loves was working at Vacation Bible School with Judy Ford yes. and the rest of the group. When I told my grandchildren that Judy had died, they were like kind of upset. They said, well, who's going to be the lady that's going to be telling, reading the story for the kids at Vacation Bible School? <laughs> so that was something that even the kids remembered her by. And I, the last one of my last conversa conversations with Judy in her house was that she described herself as a very sassy lady. And she said, I've had to be sassy to get through life. And she said, that's how everybody knows me. So, lots of good stories about you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you. Every time I'm going to speak, when someone passes away that we love, I usually lose it. Uh, I just want to say thank you, Judy. I know you're here with us for all the holidays when you came in and brightened our day with your flashing lights around your neck on Christmas or St. Patty's Day all dressed in green and you always had a ready smile and wanted everybody to have a good time. And even inside, when you weren't feeling great and you were sad, you never let us know that. You made us laugh. And I also feel that Judy never looked at our clients at the ARC as the clients they were her friends, and she loved the people that she worked with, whether they were in the staff or they were clients. But to her, everybody was a friend, and she had so much love for everybody and was so very loyal to everyone that she cared about. So I just want to thank Judy for all of that. And I better stop because she said we're not supposed to cry. And if I keep it up, I'm going to break her rule and make her mad. <laughs> Tears of love are okay. Anyone else?
Thank you everyone for your stories that paint a fuller picture of just who Judy was. Judy knew in the depth of her being that she was loved, loved by Jesus, and that her Lord had led her through her whole life, even though she didn't always perceive the Holy Spirit working. She saw it as she looked back. And I believe it's this love, this love, this unconditional love that Judy experienced for herself that was the source of all the love that she shared with us. Pastor Jessica shared that one of her favorite hymns uh, was Jesus Loves Me. Kristen, would you sing that for us now? attitude of prayer as we give thanks to our Creator for the unique gift that was duty. Let's pray. Thank you, loving God, for blessing us all with the gift of life here on earth. Thank you for this beautiful day, for the breeze that lets duty get the last word. Thank you for the gift of life you gave to her, for the love that you poured out on her, for the love that she shared so generously with us. Thank you for all that she taught us through her words, through her example. God, our Father, we thank you now for all her life, for every memory of joy and love, every good deed done by her for every sorrow and every story shared with us. We thank you, God, that you have called her home, that she is now resting in your love and your light with Jude and with Zoe and with Pat and with all who meant so much to her. Thank you for giving her to us and thank you for the hope that we will have, that we see, we'll see her again one day on a great big porch with you. God, we offer these prayers of our heart to you in the name of your Son, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Judy knew that 
that she was loved, just as she was completely and deeply, and she believed that her, it was her responsibility to share the love that she had with all that she met. May we receive this closing hymn as a blessing, but also as a permission to live as Judy lived and share the love that we receive with others. and the greatest of all is love. Go forth in courage, go forth in hope and in peace, for the love of God envelops us all this day and every day. Amen. <laughs>